this morning in Jesus' name. We bless and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. What a good and glorious day we have today. Today is Friday. This is the remembrance of the time Jesus Christ was crucified for our sins. And he hung on the cross. And because he died on the cross, now the people of the world, everybody, cannot look up to the cross of Calvary and can say that he shed his blood and he paid the final price, the full price for our redemption. You are going to raise up your voice to the Lord to glorify the name of the Lord that Jesus Christ died for us so that he can take all our sins away. The original sin, the inbred sin, the external sin, the sins we have committed. Every sin that man ever committed, Jesus Christ paid the full price, the final price, the acceptable price that the Father looked at him and said, My beloved Son has made the final sacrifice. And because of that final sacrifice today, you can be saved. Your sins can be taken away. You can be sanctified to the Adamic nature can be taken away. Jesus Christ, that he might sanctify the people, suffered without the gauge. Let us go therefore unto him, bearing his reproach. The Lord wants you to appreciate the sacrifice he made on the cross of Calvary. The Lord wants you to believe the sacrifice that he made on the cross of Calvary. What a glorious day. The remembrance of the day Jesus died for the sins of humanity. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And today, as you give yourself to the Lord, today, as you believe, on that which Jesus did and accomplished on the cross of Calvary. He can take your sins away and can give you the joy of sins forgiven. The joy of knowing that condemnation can be taken away and the power of sin can be broken in your life. And he'll make you a new creature. Give you a new life that shall never be the same again because of the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. You can do it today in your heart that we're coming from Calvary. And then when you go to your community, you become a totally different person because of the washing and the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. He cleanses, he purifies. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What a day to remember. What a day to remember. What a day to remember. That day he hung on the cross. And he hung on the cross for your sin, for my sin. He hung on the cross so that you can be forgiven, you can be saved. And of all the blessings coming from Calvary, this is the highest. This is the greatest. Salvation through Christ. Cleansing through Christ. Becoming a transformed person through Christ. A new life through Christ. Christ in you and you in Christ. The hope of glory. That's what he wants to accomplish. That's what he wants to do. That's why he came to this world. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul the Apostle said, Of whom I am chief. 
whatever sins you have committed, whatever life you have lived, this glorious Friday, as the whole world remembers the coming of Christ, this is the faithful saying, and it's worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. The angel declared, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And he himself said, I am come to seek and to save that which was lost. And when Christ gets hold of you, when you surrender yourself to Christ, you have no excuse to be lost anymore. He saves. He forgives. He cleanses. He changes our lives. He transforms us. He takes the power of sin away. And then He makes us trophies of His sacrifice, of His travail, of His accomplishment. And today you can have that new life, that new nature, by believing on what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That's salvation. That's regeneration. That's justification by faith. And that's what he wants to do. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are not saved yet, the bride, the spirit and the bride say, Come. And whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. It's free. Just turn away from your sin. Look up to Calvary. Thank God that Jesus died for you. And then you are saved. And what a glorious experience that will be. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Almighty God, we thank you at this time. We praise your name because of your love. Your word tells us, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, we glorify you, we worship and adore you for giving us Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And Lord, as we come today, and everybody in this world that he is those who go to any kind of church, they remember this Friday, Good Friday, good because the Lord showed the highest goodness to the children of men by giving Jesus on the cross to save us. Lord, we pray in all our retreat locations. The sacrifice of Jesus will be efficacious in every life in Jesus' name. 
and those who have been coming around, but they have not tasted the goodness and the grace of God flowing from Calvary. Lord, we pray for this very day they'll begin to taste of that salvation of the Lord, of the cleansing from sin, of the forgiveness of sin, of the regeneration justification, of the salvation of their soul, even from today in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, even those who are believers already will come to a new appreciation of the sacrifice of Christ. We'll come to a new appreciation of the salvation you have given us. And we'll come to a new realization of the death and the height, the breath and the length of the salvation you have given us if affecting our lives today and affecting our lives all through our lives. And then preparing us for the glory that shall come. Preparing us for the eternal life that is still to come. Oh Lord, we pray, every believer, every child of God, those who know you already, those who have the testimony of the Spirit of God, that their sins are forgiven, that their sins are taken away. Oh Lord, we pray, the death, the height, the length and the breadth of this glorious experience you have given to us on Calvary. You make us realize it today in Jesus' name. And the practical implication that we are saved, the practical conclusion that the power of sin is broken. Lord, we pray you make us realize it in Jesus' name. That as a result of such an experience, O oh Lord, we pray, others will see our lives. Others will see the change. Others will see the light shining. Others will see how the redeemed life, the regenerated life, and the forgiven life, and the life that is turned around is not bringing glory unto the Lord. And Lord, we pray as a result of seeing the light of the gospel in our own lives, that you they will turn to the Lord in Jesus' name, so that they and us will be able to have the testimony that you have done something, something gracious. Something glorious for every one of us as a result of that sacrifice, the final sacrifice, the full sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm it in every one of our experiences in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. We give the glory to you. We pray, Lord, we'll see it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Today as you look at your program, we're talking about prevailing power with God and with men. Prevailing power with God and with men. If you're familiar with the Bible, we're taking our story from Genesis chapter 32. This is the life of Jacob. Jacob had a peculiar problem. And he thought time will erase the problem. Jacob had a peculiar challenge. And he thought time will bring solution to the challenge. If, if you know the story, Jacob had enmity to the point of murder, confronting him. He had actually got the birthright of Esau. And then he got the blessing 
attached, associated to that first light. And then Esau, the original possessor, and the original one that claimed that birthright, he was after him. He threatened. He was going to kill him. The mother knew about it. And he knew about it. And so eventually, the mother and Jacob, they raised up a plan for him to run away until the anger will cool down in the heart, in the mind of Esau. So Jacob ran away. And he appeared to have settled down with Laban. Twenty years had passed. And then the Lord called Jacob. And he said, now you can go back. But Esau was still alive. And the hatred was still quite alive in the heart of Esau. And then Esau got the information that was coming. And then Esau sent back to him and said, Yes, I'm expecting you. But please tell him, the enmity is still there. The hatred is still there. And the plan to murder, to kill Jacob was still there. And then he said, now before you left, I was the only one that threatened I will kill you. But now I've surrounded myself with 400 other people. And we are all having this same plan. And then Jacob became afraid. What will he do? That Esau still had this hatred, this animosity, and this plan and project to kill Jacob. That's why now he needed to abandon every other thing and seek the face of the Lord because he knew this is life or death situation. Have you come to such a situation in your life? That you realize that this is a situation that if you are not very, very serious and focused, it might affect your life and affect your family and affect Everything you have gathered together all these many years. That's why you need to learn from Jacob what he did. In, in Genesis chapter 32, look at verse 28. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou, was, thou hast power with God and with men, and has prevailed. He was in travail in prayer. He had agony in his heart. As he reached out to the Lord in prayer, he wanted a change. You know the change he wanted? He wanted the change in the heart of Esau, his enemy. But you know what God did? God made the change in his name and nature first. Before your enemy will change, you will have to change. Before there will be a transformation in your situation, in the conditions around you, there will be, be a change, a transformation in you first. Before the things that are turned upside down cannot be right side up. First of all, there will be a change, 
a transformation, a turning around in your own life. First of all, there was a change in Jacob's name. You will no more be called Jacob. But Israel shall thy name be. And then now he became a prince. The angel now said, you are a prince. A change in his status. You see, many times we want change in our external condition. But the external condition will not change until the internal stage and status changes. First of all, a change in the heart. A change in the nature. A change in the attitude. A change in the lifestyle. It is a change within that attracts the change without. It is a change in the person that attracts the change in your profession. And then it said, now you have power. He didn't have this kind of power before. The kind of power he had was to supplant, was to cheat. He had this cleverness of cheating. But you see that power only brought him hatred, danger. And then his life was at risk. But now a new power has come. And it says there was power with God and with men. Before you can have power with men, you first of all have power with God. How many people bypass God, sidetrack God, and they want to have power with men? They want to overcome and prevail on men. But they do not have power with God. But you see, you cannot do that. It is God that is the source of all power and the source of all authority. And if you are going to have power with men, first of all, you have power with God. And then it says, now with men you have power. Begin to study now the life of Jacob from this point on. And you will see in the very next chapter how the heart of Esau was subdued. And Esau wept, that strong man. And then he kissed him. And without saying it in words, he said it in action. He said, Jacob, everything is over. What 20 years of cleverness could not accomplish. One night of prayer had accomplished it. And, and the angel said, now you have prevailed. If we can really become wise. And if the wise can become wiser. And instead of taking things into our hands, trying to solve the problem, it might take us as many years as it took Jacob. And yet, in one night of prayer, in one day of prayer, in one day of making our problems come to the very hand of God, we can have such power with God and such power with men that then your greatest enemy will say it's all over by prayer and faith in God. That's why we're looking at this today, prevailing power with God and with men. Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12. Reading from verse 3. Jesus is still talking about the experience of Jacob. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. And by his strength, he had power 
with God. By his strength, he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept. He made supplication unto him. Supplication means prayer. That Jacob wept. Yes, he ought to. He remembered all his cleverness and cunning craftiness. And he saw that all that cleverness and cunning craftiness only destroyed him. Now there are children. Now there are, there is cattle. Now there is property. But his life is in danger. And Jacob wept. And they were told he found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. What that means is what Jacob did is giving us a lesson. He speak with us. Jacob is telling us by what he did, by what he experienced. He's saying, are you going through some troubled waters? I did. Are you having some challenges in your life? I had. Are you afraid that your life may be cut short by a powerful enemy, formidable enemy? I was afraid too. But then he said, I got a solution. Because I wrestled with that angel. I put every other thing aside. I called on the name of the Lord. And the Lord heard me. In that way, he's speaking to us and he's saying, you can have the same victory. And in verse 5, even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. That's what Jacob is telling us. He said, I went through it and I prevailed with God, and I prevailed with men. And therefore he says, therefore, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. As we look at this reality of prevailing power, with God and with men. We're going to look at three, three areas of this message. Number one, passionate prayer of a traveling soul. Passionate prayer of a traveling soul. Number two, persevering prayer of a truthful son. Persevering prayer of a truthful son. Number three, prevailing power of a transformed sage. Prevailing power of a transformed sage. Number one, passionate prayer. What kind of prayer did Jacob pray? Passionate prayer. What kind of prayer did Jabez pray? Passionate prayer. What kind of prayer did Isaiah pray? Passionate prayer. Come, see our Lord in Gethsemane as he faced the cross. And the sweat coming from him was like great drops of blood. What kind of prayer did Jesus pray in Gethsemane? Passionate prayer. See Paul from Jerusalem to Damascus and see him 
as he fell to the ground. And then when he rose up, he lost his eyesight. And God told Ananias in Damascus, go to that street and you'll find Saul of Tarsus. Behold, he prays. What kind of prayer? The son of Tarsus pray, passionate prayer. If you are in trouble, if you have a calamity, if you have a problem, if you have an insurmountable mountain, if you have a great enmity fighting against your progress, against your, against your possession, against your very life, and now you come to the Lord to pray, your life is being broken. Your business is being shattered. Your children are being scattered. Your head is almost scattered and confused. And this problem is overwhelming you. What kind of prayer will you pray? Passionate prayer. The passionate prayer of a traveling soul. You know, there are people that pray, and the prayer is just superficial. You can tell, maybe they don't have any problem. You can tell, maybe they have problem, but it doesn't dawn on, it has not dawned on them. That this is a very great problem, a life-threatening problem. But the day you wake up, and the day you realize, that your life is in danger. That all your property, everything you have got until this time is at risk. The time it strikes you like an arrow. That's the greatest love and the greatest thing that you have is about to be taken away from you. And then you come to pray. It will be passionate prayer of a traveling soul. In Genesis chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 6, verse 7, and verse 11. Genesis chapter 32, verse 6. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he cometh to meet thee. And four hundred men was him. Verse seven. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Esau alone brought fear in his heart. But Esau with four hundred men. It was no more a secret. This one now is a clear, open information. It was not an imagination anymore. It was not a supposition anymore. This is now a declared fact. Esau is coming. It wasn't as far away anymore as Haran was far away because now is very near. This brought fear and distress, and Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and the herds, and the camels into two bands. Verse 11. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. He began to pray, and this was passionate prayer. When your soul is in travail, when the death of your heart is broken up, when you think very deep of the direction in which your life is going, and when you think of the enemy that is trying to confront you and stop your journey, 
If you don't think about your problem, you might just be at ease. Or you might just be free and carefree. If you do not know the death of the enmity of Esau, if you do not believe the information you have about the great danger that confronts you, you might just say a kind of usual, normal, insipid, ineffective prayer. But when you come face to face with reality, and you know this is a great problem confronting you, then your soul will be in travail. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. I'm reading from verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Are there people that do not tremble at the word? Yes, there are. Are there people that will hear? This is what the Lord has said. And then they do not tremble. They do not travail. Yes, there are people like that. A man of God came to Eli. And he said, go and tell him, I will do something in your family and in Israel that every ear that hear will twinkle. That every ear that everyone that hears will tremble. And then God also showed Samuel and said, I'm going to do something in the house of Eli. And it's going to be very terrible. And then Samuel woke up in the morning. And Eli called him. And Eli said, tell me. Hide nothing from me. God, do so to you. If you hide anything from me of what the Lord has told you. And then Samuel said, this is what the Lord said he will do to your family. It's going to be terrible. What was the response of Eli? He is God. Let him do what seems unto him good. He is God. I cannot dispute. I cannot argue. I cannot even, if God has made up his mind, he wants to wipe away his family. He is God. Let him do what he wants to do. There are people like Eli. It, does, it never concerns them. That their life is at risk. That everything they have on earth, everything that would have brought a great reward to them in eternity, everything now is at risk. It never concerns them. They just do like Eli is God, let him do whatever seems to him good. That's why the Lord said, and there are some people there that tremble at the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, he that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. But ye shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, the traveling soul, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child who has heard such a thing, who has seen such things. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall the nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, 
she brought forth her children. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. That's how to prevail. Pray passionately with the soul that travails. In Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. I'm reading a verse there to you. What had happened is, Paul the Apostle went to the province of Galatia. And he preached the word to them. And many of them got a revelation of the crucifixion of Christ. And they saw by faith the blood that cleanses, the blood that saves. And they held on to that efficacy of the transforming power of the blood of the Lamb. They became saved. And there were many of them. And Paul the Apostle rejoiced because a great evangelistic work had been done in Galatia. And then he left and he went to another place to keep on, to move on in the preaching of the gospel. But some other people, the Judaizers, they came to Galatia and they confused the Galatians. And he told them that the cross is not enough for their salvation. They told them that Jesus is not enough for their salvation. They must not only believe in God, they must also believe in the law of Moses. They told them, God, Christ, Calvary, cross, justification by faith, that's not enough. They must still come to add this to their faith and confidence before they could be saved. And then Paul the Apostle came to them and wrote back to them. First of all, he was so concerned. And he said in chapter 3, verse 1 of foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, this is more than ordinary human effort. This is bewitching somebody to leave the truth and to come into error who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And then in bringing them back to the Lord from their backsliding position. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. My little children, my soul is travailing again, until Christ be formed in you. Passionate prayer. Of a travailing soul. Point number two. Persevering prayer. Of a truthful son. Persevering prayer. Of a truthful son. It's no use persevering prayer. If we are not truthful. It's no use continuing in prayer. If we are insincere, it's no use sweating in prayer if we hold on to error and falsehood. Prayer that perseveres before it becomes efficacious must have the heart of truth behind it. Genesis chapter 32. In Genesis chapter 32, reading from verse 24, Genesis 32 verse 24, And Jacob was led alone, 
And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And what his struggle that was. His struggle. His struggle. There comes a time in prayer when you are pushing and the sin is pushing back. There comes a time in prayer when you are struggling and the object you struggle with is mighty and stronger than you. There comes a time in prayer when you want to have a breakthrough and there's a blockage, there's a hindrance, and there's a bottleneck, and it struggles until the breaking of the day. And Esau was coming. And Esau was not slowing down. And Jacob did not have the assurance that he had gotten a breakthrough. And he was saying, the day is breaking. And I'm not making any headway. I am praying, but I'm not getting through. That means then, this kind of problem we're talking about is going to take praying for more than five minutes or ten minutes or even one hour until there is a breaking through, until the struggle actually produces a result. And so we're told in Numbers 24, he was left alone. And there he wrestled. Yet until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie. God is concerned about touching you before he touches your enemy. He can do that. He can touch your enemy. He can turn your enemy around. He can paralyze all those 400 people following Esau. But he must touch you first. Before he touches your problem, he must touch you first. Before he transforms your situation, he must transform you first. Before he overcomes Esau, he must overcome you first. Many people don't realize change within will produce change without. But many times, we're just looking for change without. Oh Lord, change my enemy. Change the situation. Change my circumstances. Stop Esau. Paralyze the 400 people following Esau. Turn them around. He will turn you around first. And when he saw in verse 25 that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie. And the only of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go. Nothing has come out of one night's prayer. The angel said, let me go. The breakthrough had not come. The angel said, let me go. The answer has not been given. The angel said, let me go. You hear something from that? You see any test in that? Do you see that his purpose of prayer was tested? His purpose of travail was tested. And the angel said, let me go. Angel, why did you come from heaven to come and wrestle with me for the whole of the night? There must be something you had in heart. There must be something God sent you for. I have not got the thing. And you say, let me go. It's a test. A test will come to everyone. And it's God that brings the test himself. Let me go for the day breakers. And he said, I will not let you go. I've lost something out of my tie already. 
You have touched my tie already. And I know I'm missing something already. You might touch another place and I miss another thing, but I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold fast. I'm not going to give up. I'm not to, going to give in. I'm going to hold on until you bless me. I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? Here comes the moment of truth. What is thy name? That question was asked 20 years ago before. And it was the answer of Jacob at that time that brought him the trouble he was in. His father Isaac said, Who is this? What is thy name? And he said, My name is Esau. The hand is Jacob, is Esau's hand, but the voice is the voice of Jacob. And he got the blessing by falsehood, by deception, by lying. And now that question came back to him again. What is thy name? He had become now a truthful son. My name is Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou was, thou was power. With God and with men, and has prevailed. That's what the Lord is looking for before He answers our prayer. Truthfulness. Truthfulness. Isaiah. He wants truthfulness in us. Faithfulness. That to say the very truth. Instead of Isaiah, let's come to the Psalms. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. If you want the Lord to touch you, to turn you around, to transform you so he can touch your enemy. So he can turn your enemy around. So he can transform the hatred of your enemy to forgiveness and love and joy and hope. He desires truth in the inward parts. And in the easy past, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. As Jacob became truthful, then there was an announcement, pronouncement of the prevailing power that she had. Point number three, prevailing power of a transformed saint. Prevailing power of a transformed saint. When the Lord touches us and He transforms us from being a sinner to being a saint, some kind of power, supernatural power, comes in our lives and between us and the enemy there is the overcoming power genesis 32 again verse 28 and he said thy name shall be called no more jacob but israel no more a supplanter but a prince no more a sinner, 
but a sage. No more a backslider, but a believer. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, as thou power with God and with men, and as prevailed. Chapter 33, verse 1. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, he saw came and with four hundred men. Behold, Jacob, he looked up and he saw, he saw, and then he saw the four hundred men. They were coming in this direction. But the fear was gone. A transformed man who has prevailed with God, who has prevailed with the angel, who has prevailed with men. No more fear. The fear of death. The fear of the enmity of Esau. The fear of being wiped away from the face of the earth. We are told in verse 3, And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. The four hundred men were still there. The 400 men were just looking. And Esau had not given any contrary instruction to the 400 men. And their ammunition and arms were still in their hands. Their hands were paralyzed. Their hearts were kind of tender and soft. They were just looking on. And all of a sudden, the hatred and the enmity in Esau, everything turned around. The hardness of heart was gone. The toughness had changed to tenderness in his heart. And then as Jacob was coming, Esau dropped everything in his hand. And he ran towards Jacob. And they embraced one another. And they wept on one another's necks. The power of prayer. When you tarry, when you wait in the presence of God, and when you take your problems, you take those problems unto the Lord Almighty. And you say, Lord, here I am. I want a touch from the Lord. And do you know today, the Lord can make a similar change. He can make a similar transformation. Why don't you drop everything in your hand, and then rise up and forget everything around you. Because you have to travel in prayer before there will be a transformation. Before there will be a power that will touch your life and move everything, move everything around in your life. Passionate prayer. Passionate prayer of a traveling soul. You have any problem? You have any danger confronting you, your personal life? You have any sin that presses you or presses you down? You have any trauma in your life? You have any request, any desire in your life? You have any insult wanting to wipe away your life? You have any group of people wanting to stop your onward journey? You have any danger confronting your life? You have any problem that you want to bring to the Lord? Are you traveling in your soul? You have a burden? You have a concern? Are you discouraged or distressed? An oppressed soul? An afflicted soul? A wandering heart? Oh Lord, when will all this be over? What are you telling the Lord? Passionate prayer of a travailing soul. Like Jacob travailed, 
like Jacob called upon the Lord, like Jacob wrestled with the angel. He wanted a breakthrough. He wanted a transformation. He wanted a change. He wanted the enmity in the heart and the life of Esau to be taken away. He wanted the long-standing problem between Esau and him to be taken away. He knew I must have a solution now. Twenty years had dragged by. He never prayed about the problem. He was busy having cattle. He was busy raising children. He was busy getting this and getting that. Twenty years had passed by. And he never thought about it. He thought time will solve the problem. He woke up suddenly and he saw that 20 years had not erased the problem from the mind, from the heart of Esau. That Esau was getting more prepared to fight him. And he knew this is that moment, the moment of truth, that he had to confront the problem. This is that moment for you. When you think about the problem, you'll travail in your soul. When you want a breakthrough, you'll travail in your soul. When you want this compulsory change, you'll travail in your soul. When you want a real turning around, you'll travail in your soul. When you want the power from heaven to confront the powers on earth, you'll travail in your soul. And your prayer will be passionate. You want something from the Lord. Passionate. Passionate prayer of a travailing soul. The prayer will not be superficial. When you know the height of the problem, the depth of the problem, the length and the breadth of the problem, When you know the danger that confronts you. When you know the seriousness of the enmity of the world against you. And you want a real solution. There will be the passionate prayer of a travailing soul. And you will be truthful. Persevering prayer of a truthful son. You'll be truthful. All the false, deceptive things will be put aside. Hypocrisy will not have a place. In your life, if you want your prayer to be answered, insincerity will not have a place in your life. If you want your prayer to be answered, if you are calling upon the Lord passionately, falsehood, deception will not have a place. You'll be true to God. You'll be true to yourself. You'll be true to your neighbor. When you are passionate and you want to have that breakthrough, there'll be the persevering prayer 
of a truthful son. Passionate prayer. Persevering prayer. Opening your heart, your soul unto the Lord. Presenting this problem unto the Lord. That the Lord will get rid of the problem. Passionately. Passionately asking the Lord to touch his soul and the four hundred men with him, but he will have to touch you first, transform you first, turn you around first. Personal change before the desired change in the problems, the situations that confront you. Passionate prayer, persevering prayer that will lead you to the prevailing power over men over circumstances, over every situation in your life. He taught you. Then he will touch his soul. He will transform you. Then it will transform his soul and the 400 men with him. He'll change you. Then it will change the circumstances in your life. If you have not been born again, this is the time to give your life to the Lord, to become truthful. True to yourself and true to the Almighty God. True to yourself and true to the Almighty God. The moment of truth. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. He that covereth the sin shall prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. He shall see the travail of His soul and rejoice, he'll be glad. And when you have that traveling soul, and you are passionate in prayer, it touches your life, it transforms your life, it forgives you and it saves you, it cleanses you from all unrighteousness, it makes you a new creature in Christ. And then after that, he'll touch your situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you because you've shown us the example of Jacob. 
as he travailed in prayer. And then, he, because he travailed, he prevailed. Oh Lord, we pray as we come to you today and during this retreat time. As we travail in your presence, we pray, oh Lord, we will prevail in Jesus' name. The sin that so easily besets, the sin that conquers the believer with temptations and trials, all those iniquities and transgressions fighting against the lives of the believers, prevailing over them. Oh Lord, as everyone will come face to face with their helplessness and their impotence, and they see that all these transgressions and iniquities are multiplying to fight against their lives and to destroy them and to drown them in eternal perdition. As everyone will come during this retreat and travail, Lord, we will prevail. And sin shall no more have dominion over us in Jesus' name. The life of victory, the life of righteousness, the life of the overcomer, you give to every one of us in Jesus' name. As soon as Zion travailed, he brought forth children. As the faithful people of God, O oh Lord, travail in every location of the retreat. We pray, Lord, souls will be born into the kingdom in Jesus' name. New life in new creatures. New life of people that come into the kingdom of God. Oh Lord, as the ministers of God travail in their soul, in their spirit, like Paul, the apostle traveled for the Galatians. We pray, O oh Lord, you restore the backsliders in Jesus' name. And you'll wash everyone as white as snow. You're creating us a clean heart, O oh God. And this truthfulness that eventually Jacob came into you, you grant us this grace of truthfulness in Jesus name Lord you will not overlook the travails of your people you will not overlook the body in the heart of your people I will pray oh Lord you give us breakthrough in the spiritual realm make us overcome in the, in the spiritual realm and Lord we pray Ours will be the joy of the promises of God being fulfilled in our lives. Confirm it in every life, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.